Hi and welcome. This video is all about acid properties in SQL Server. You might have come across this acid in your chemistry subject. But here in SQL Server, this acid A stands for atomicity, C consistency, I isolation and D durability. Every successful transaction in SQL Server has to pass this acid test to keep the database in a consistent state. So here I use the word transaction. What does a transaction mean? It is a group of statements where a sequence of work is done to complete the whole activity by applying the principle do everything or do nothing. We can also define transaction as a logical group of tasks that can change the data to be stored in a database. Now let's see all four properties one by one. First is atomicity. What is atomicity? It ensures that all DML statements that could be your insert, delete or update statement inside a transaction are either completed or all of them are rolled back. For suppose you have written 10 statements inside a transaction. Then if nine transactions are succeeded, one has been failed. Then SQL Server has to roll back the previous nine transactions that are completed successfully in order to satisfy automaticity property. There should not be any partial execution. If you rerun that statement or a transaction, it will not resume from where it has failed, but instead it will restart from starting point of your transaction that is from statement 1. For suppose if you have visited a ATM to withdraw cash, you have entered your PIN and everything all details are entered but cash is not dispensed. It means your transaction is failed. Now when you retry withdrawing your cash from ATM, it will again start from the beginning. That means it will ask you to enter the PIN to enter the amount and then it will dispense the cash. Let us see a demo on automaticity property in SQL Server Management Studio. Here is my SQL Server instance and I have one database. Inside this database, I have total four tables. We are going to take these two tables, employee salary and employee. These are the records present inside these two tables. Employee table has total three records and employee salary table has two records. You can see for every employee, there is an information about his salary in employee salary table. But for this third employee, since the status is inactive of, uh, for that employee, we don't have any record pertaining to that salary information for this employee. Now I'm going to make this employee status as active and then I'm going to insert the salary information of that employee. For that, I have single statement, sorry, single transaction where I have update statement and insert statement. This transaction when executed successfully, it will in update the this employee status as active and then it will insert the record here with salary. But I want to fail one of the statement inside this transaction. That's why I have used this string instead of the integer value of the salary. Let me execute this transaction. And you can see one row is affected and you got another error. So this statement is executed successfully, but not this statement because of the error. Following automaticity property, all the statements inside the transaction should be completed successfully or rolled back. Now let's see the results of the table. It should be same as it is. It should not make it active because the statement pertaining to insert is failed. Let's execute and check. Yes, it has not made any changes. It means it has made first but then this has this statement has been failed insert statement has been failed and this has been rolled back okay 
now let's insert the proper value and execute it once again i have to pass integer value here now it is fine i am executing this transaction you can see both the roads are affected and now go and check the table values see this transaction it should be it will become active and you will get one record inserted in employee salary table yes the transaction is completed successfully next our second property is consistency this ensures database is in a consistent state before the transaction was started and after the transaction is completed successfully before the transaction is completed or before the transaction is started our database is in consistent state so even after the transaction is completed your database has to be remain in a consistent state if whatever may happen in middle of the transaction it should not leave your database in a half completed state if there is a transaction error the changes that have already been made will be rolled back to restore your database to its previous consistent state let us understand this using a simple example we have two persons a and b a is having 15000 and b is having 25000 when you sum these two amounts will be having 40000 so this is one of the consistent state of your database now b is in need of some amount and a is ready to give that amount to b this is before the transaction okay now a is starting a transaction of rupees 5000 it means account of a will be debited with 5000 and account of b will be credited with the 5000 and once the transaction is completed successfully in the account of a it will be 10000 and in account of b it will be 30000 and again the sum will be 40000 and again we have the same consistency after the transaction so before the transaction happened and after the transaction is completed successfully the database should be in a consistent state if for suppose a account has been debited but b has not received the funds then the changes done will be rolled back and a will receive a refund of 5000 it means it will restore to its previous con consistency state which is 40000 in this way after every transaction your db will be transformed from one consistent state to another consistent state next we'll see our third property which is isolation when multiple transactions are executed together none of the transaction should be affected by other transaction it means the partial effects of one transaction should not be used by other transactions each transaction is independent of every other transaction the concurrency control component will take care of this isolation property and in sql server we have locking mechanism that maintains this isolation property let us understand this using a simple example with a demo in sql server management studio i have a sql server instance and i am taking db123 database as an example inside this database i have total four tables i am taking employee table here so the contents inside this employee table are you can see there are three records now i am going to modify the em third employee information i am going to modify the phone number of this employee so i am going to start a new connection so this is my new connection let's say one user has connected to the database or to the server and he started updating the employee information and he is trying to update the phone number and he is using begin trans statement once i execute this you can see the row is affected and at the same time another user has connected and he is trying to access the employee table
when he execute this you can see the statement is still executing it will not complete this execution until the previous user roll back or commit the transaction because this user has acquired a roll lock on employee table but this user can use where condition and access another employee table sorry another employee record you can see he has got the record of that particular employee he is unable to access employee table because this employee table contains the information of all the employees including the employee whose id is 98462 because it has acquired row lock on 98462 employee it cannot access uh, the other user cannot access complete employee table but he can access the another rows excluding this row now let me remove this where clause and try to access the employee table again you can see it will be executing only you can see here the session 60 is blocked by the session 51 you can check this using sp underscore who to sp underscore who to our session is 60 you can see 60 session is being blocked by 51 what it is doing it is running a select statement it is running select statement so 51 is blocking the 60 session let's say we have in 51 session the user has rolled back this transaction okay and once rollback is completed successfully the user connected in session 60 can access the employee table i mean this will be displaying the records just look at this yeah so the session 60 can access the employee records the lock has been released you can execute sp underscore who to and you can check there is no blocking sessions here the session 60 is sleeping status okay so this way sql server maintains locking mechanism to maintain the isolation property the last property we have is durability this ensures once the transaction is successfully completed or when the transaction is committed successfully then the changes it made to the database will be permanent even if there is some system failure or power failure it should safeguard your committed data it means all these completed transactions or the committed transactions will be written to the disk and no changes will be made to them until you change it by yourself here in my database i have a employee table and these are the records inside this table here i am going to insert one more record of my employee once I commit this transaction, you can see the one row has been affected and I can see the new employee data in the table. My transaction is completed successfully and it has been written to the disk. So even in case of any system failure or server has been shut down, this data is available in the disk. because this is a successful transaction so by this i can say my database is durable most of the popular databases such as sql server oracle and mysql follows this acid properties by default when you design any system or database you have to make sure to follow these acid properties that will help you to better develop applications and remember each successful transaction has to pass this acid test to make your database consistent if automaticity isolation and durability property holds good then consistency holds good automatically 
and you cannot force SQL Server to use particular property or not to use particular property. It is the server behavior to use the ACID properties by default. So that's all in this video. Hope you have enjoyed it. If visited my channel for the first time, please subscribe my channel for more videos and hit the bell icon to get notified of the upcoming videos. And also check the playlist, the SQL interview questions, MS Azure and MS SQL. That's all in this video. Thanks for watching the video. Please do like, share and subscribe for more videos.